Hello everyone, I'm Jeff at Drum for Work and I wanted to help you with singing bowl selection. We've gotten a lot of questions and on our Sonic Energy Tour people are always asking what are the differences? How do we select different singing bowls? I want to give you a, a quick tour, quick run through, show you a couple of the secrets and some options for our workshop coming up. Uh, this is a great medium to medium large bowl. I think this is probably about seven inches. Um, actually six and a half, seven inches. Nope, it is seven and a quarter. So <laughs> my guesstimate was a little bit off, but it has a beautiful tone. These are this series of bowl is made in Kathmandu, Nepal all hand hammered and we do have a few of these left for sale uh, in this range let's see i think this one is sold and this is another one i think this is probably six inch each one has a very unique set of characteristics. It's not just the fundamental pitch, but it's also the harmonic series, the overtone series that you're listening for. Each one has multiple tones. As you can see, every one of the hammer marks that is used when they're tuning it starts a different harmonic series or tunes a different note into the bowl. So when they're tuning it, they're not just tuning it to one note, they're tuning it to a harmonic resonance. So even just having one bowl You're not looking for that tried and true perfect pitch. You're looking for that binaural effect. And that's where the meditation comes from. And that's what you focus on while you're meditating. Uh, this is a chakra set of those Nepalese bowls. I've been fortunate to be able to hand select as we go through our orders hundreds of singing bowls I'm able to through a grid process select chakra sets and this is a uh, seven notes in this set but they don't have to be to all seven chakras healing can be done with a single bowl uh, many times for a reference let me give you an idea of our Himalayan hand hammered set So in India, the starting pitch for most instruments is a C sharp. And the uh, set on the bottom was tuned more in a C natural. So it just kind of depends on the frequencies that you feel tuned to and that uh, you use for healing. Uh, these are replicating sounds that are found around us all the time in music and nature and it's unique for each person. Even though we have general frequencies, the larger uh, parts of the body are affected by generally lower frequencies and, and smaller places in the body are affected by higher frequencies. So usually for your first bowl, you wanna try to get something in the middle, something that's well-rounded. Uh, there's a lot of difference in the construction, in the mallets. Uh, we offer these leather-wrapped mallets uh, and that gives a softer tone, but you can definitely use the wooden side. You can hear the scraping of the wood on the bowl, so a lot of the times people prefer the softer sound of the leather wrapped mallet. And it's definitely warmer when you strike the bowl but a lot of the times I like that, that higher harmonic that comes out from using wood. I use different size dowels. And so here's a very thin dowel. And it even brings out a higher register of harmonics. So there's no one mallet for one bowl. The favorite one that I use has enough weight to it so that I can kind of keep my hand in place on top when I'm using the friction sustain and the weight of the mallet almost produces the right pitch on the on uh, sorry the right pressure on the bowl to make the sound and 
Some people also prefer the soft mallets just to activate it for that note. Now, if I was doing uh, energy work, energy healing, I would actually press into the place that my body needed it, or it could just be in a general area. Many times the healing travels throughout the body, sound travels. And so this is one of my favorite exercises, and we'll talk about a lot more in the workshop. I know I look like a Martian, it may be a little silly, but this feels great. Now I can feel it through the crown of my head, but immediately I can feel it going down through my neck and my spine. I feel it actually in my lower back right there. Uh, also in my left leg, my left thigh. Yeah, I can feel it in my hip on this side. So it's amazing that the sound knows where to go in your body. It knows where your body needs the healing. You have to somewhat dial it in. You have to figure out, well, which size bowl, which frequency, which uh, what volume level, all of these things are factors. So using a variety of different mallets and sticks, some of my favorite testing mallets are not even singing bowl mallets. I play marimba and other keyboard percussion. So I love to use marimba mallets. These are yarn wound mallets or sometimes I use cord wound mallets and I'm always testing sounds from a light fixture. And just to show that for our workshops, you don't necessarily have to have one of the bowls made in Nepal or, or India. Uh, one of my favorite bowls is actually a big mixing bowl. This is just a stainless steel salad bowl. So if you're going through these, the first thing is just tap them out of your cabinet or in the department store, see what kind of tone they make. Uh, believe me, you'll find quite a, a variance because there's no quality control for the tone of the mixing bowls. But after going through quite a few, I found one that produced just the right tone for me. And I've used that bowl on so many healing recordings. And of course they come, you can go through different sizes. Almost makes the, the tuning of a ukulele. Or I also found these on a found sound treasure hunt. Uh, these are decorative bowls made in India, but uh, they appear to be machine hammered and they have a very unique tone. It's not something that I would want to play all the time. But listen to this super low, warm, resonant pitch coming from this bowl. So you can find healing in many different sounds. Even though the, the first ones that I showed were hand hammered, they're a little more expensive. I've also found the quality in some machine hammered bowls. The machine hammered bowls tend to be more true, more perfect in their construction. And uh, the hammering process is very controlled. I usually use a wooden mallet for this one. So with any mallet, you're gonna to have to use three or four or five, six revolutions. It takes a little while to warm the bowl up, so don't get frustrated at first. We'll talk about that in the workshop. Let me give you a couple of other examples. This is a larger bowl than what I was just playing. But do you notice that the pitch is actually higher? And it really sings out. So you just have to find what works for you the best. What sound are you attracted to? Now I had held on to these three because of their sympathetic vibrations. I just like the triad that they created. And another one that I use often. And again, these are machine hammered bowls, but I went through a lot of similar bowls and until I found the, 
the right tones. Uh, this was one that I actually inherited from a dear friend. Notice I, I recommend taking them off of the cushions or the, the pillows. Uh, there's some modern ones that, that we uh, sell through Meinl that are very thin rubber cushions and those work great. Uh, try to stay away from the big pillows. Uh, they might work after certain types of operations, but not for singing bowls. When you place it in the pillow, they muffle a majority of the bowl, so you're not getting the pure sound. The best is to flex your fingers back so it tightens up the palm and tightens up the skin on the palm of your hand, and that's gonna produce the most resonant, sustaining tone. Some bowls can actually go without the the mallet if they're not rattling or moving around too much uh, you can always use what i've used on the shelf for a little carpet remnants and uh, uh, little rubber pads so just about anything can be used last but not least we've got uh, some other hand hammer bowls that are very thin thinner bowls tend to activate a little easier they're, they start up quicker for the friction and another cool thing about the thinner bowls is you can add water and you can change the pitch. You can change the harmonic resonance of the bowl by moving it around. I'll show you that in a video and in a workshop too. If you let the bowl pivot in your hand a little bit, you create a natural oscillation that goes along with it. I'm not letting these ring for as long as I would if I was meditating. I just wanted to give a quick sound. So here we go, a quick run through of all the bowls and you can kind of say uh, shelf one, two, three, four. I, I can tell you most of the things, obviously my Himalayan set. Uh, I, I may let the machine hammers go, even if it's just on a loan to get you through uh, the workshop. Uh, just contact us, and, you know, give us a question in the comments below and uh, we'll respond. Obviously, I'm not going to go through the pricing. It's all different uh, uh, based on whether they're machine hammered. Hand hammered thin. A reference for the Himalayan. But I just like to add that note in. That bowl works so well in so many different scenarios. So let me know what frequency you like best and we'll do our best to work something out. Last but not least, not only the mallets that I've talked about, but I also love rubber mallets. They really bring out the fundamental and produce a nice warm resonance. So thanks for watching. I hope I provided some information and a little more clarity into some of the bowls that we're experiencing in the world of metal. These bowls are primarily made from 80% bronze and 20% tin. There's traces of uh, nickel, iron, and zinc inside which produce a longer lasting tone and uh, some durability, things like that, but the higher content of bronze is going to give you more warmth. And when you're looking at a lot of these bowls online, you, you really don't know what's going into the makeup. These uh, ingredients are passed down from family to family and, and sec secret recipes. And each family has their own unique recipe that creates their sound and then couple that with their hammering technique, their firing technique, everyone's different. So when you talk about these machine uh, bowls that a lot of the times are a great deal on Amazon, you're getting uh, overtones that aren't really healing. Uh, sometimes you may find one that works, you may get lucky. A lot of the things that I find on my found sound treasure hunt are just things that my ears liked and then things that my body could feel. So. I hope that helps a little bit. If you'd like to know more, uh, feel free to email me at info at drumforwork.com. Check out our website, drumforwork.com, and uh, like and subscribe to our YouTube page, Jeff Holland Sonic Artist. Thanks so much.